it's a short note. <clears throat> and I want to start with arrays first. Okay, so this is the um, one of the most important topics in JavaScript. Actually, I should say that every object in array um, in in JavaScript is actually a part of what's called the associative array. So what we'll see a little bit down here, because so there are two types of arrays. One is just the indexed array, the other is the um, associative array. And the associative array is and has another name, we usually use that called object. Right? So when you create object, we usually end up using the associative array. And that's why I, I think every object in JavaScript is based on the associative array. Okay, so um, <coughs> array is an object, as you can see, right? It's a when we say object, remember we talked about those two different categories, the um, primitive type and the object type, right? It's the reference type. So uh, array is an object, so therefore it's a reference type. That means that um, you, when we compare arrays, we're actually comparing the memory address of it and not the actual value. If you want to care, uh, compare the values, you have to make sure you, you actually you know, reference the element in there instead. So, But it's a global object. Um, it's a list-like, okay? If you think about list of items, a list box, things like that. It's a list of items, and because JavaScript is not um, a strongly typed language, right? You can have a mix of any type of data in there. You can have the numbers, uh, objects, other arrays of other objects in there. It, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, <clears throat> here is this length of the array, or the no, the type are fixed, right? So there's no limit to, um, there's a limit of course, but you don't specify the limit of the array. It, it, it shrinks and it grows um, pretty much automatically. So you can delete items from the array, you can shrink it, you can reset the length of the array. Um, you just go array that length equals to a new length and then you can automatically truncate the other uh, pieces and you just add more uh, to it and you add additional length to the array um, automatically. So it's on it's very very flexible, unlike um, Java or you know other language like VB. Once you set its fixed size, that's it. You're stuck there, okay, um, <clears throat> most of the time. So the length can change any time. Data can also be changed any time. So therefore, it says data can be stored at non-contiguous location, right? So that means that you don't have to store everything in the array sequentially. Okay, that means I can create a array of five elements, and the first two elements has data. I can skip the next two, and I just fill up the last one, and and the, the the other two in between can be just undefined. Okay, is is no problem. And all of a sudden, I should say, you know what? I want to create an array at position a thousand, and create a value there. So all the hundreds, all the hundred nine hundred nine hundred ninety nine, whatever it is, uh, elements in there will be uh, dynamically generated created for you as well, and but they'll all be um, undefined, okay? So it's very, very flexible in there. We'll do some examples. Can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. the length of the array like that? Yeah, if you pick index zero and, and then fill that with information and then fill space uh, index five. Mm -hmm. And then you have those in between that are undefined. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't think of an, a good e example. It's just that you can. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you can. And I, I, I guess a good example would be like if you want to ran randomly generate any position in the array, mm -hmm. like maybe for a game or for, I guess, a lottery or for I guess coupon right oh, okay. so you can randomly generate from 1 to n it doesn't matter what n is and any position can be randomly generated any, any time so your coupon can be in the uh, 100,000 this time mm -hmm. next time be a different location in the array uh, um, so okay. that will be another uh, reason okay. okay and you can also keep increasing the array size let's just say the number of, uh, of input from the user Right, you can say, you know, enter some somebody's name, and each time an enter, entry comes in, you can you can actually add a new element to the array, so you, it it will increment automatically, whereas you can't do that in a fixed array, right? It's it's fixed. Okay. Yeah. So. 
Good question, though. Um, <clears throat> again, here, right? These are just convenient characteristics. So, um, so it's, it's I guess give you that flexibility for whatever reason you want to use it for. So there are two types, the indexed array, this is probably the one that you are maybe uh, still more familiar with when you deal with only just index position. And then we'll talk about the associated array later. <clears throat> this has become very popular also because when we deal with objects in JavaScript, it, it has, it deal with this um, associated array. So index array contains uh, any element of any type. You can have a mix of different types. The only caveat is that the index must be integer. Okay, you cannot use like a, a, a character or a string or other objects in the uh, index position. So it has to be only from zero to whatever that number is. Okay, and you and you reference the actual value or the element using that index, right? So um, just typical typical arrays, and there are like several ways that you can create arrays too. And so one way is by using this um, array literal, and you would do that by just, you know, <clears throat> say your identifier, and then just add your elements in there in the square brackets here, like, like you do here. So if I say fruits1 equals, I put a, a pair of brackets, square brackets, and in the there I would um, uh, set my values. So to the that first value there is the zeroth position. I mean, automatically sets to zero index. Um, here I've just put the character or the string apple. It could be, it could have been another object. It could be another array. It could be uh, a number, right? It could be anything there in that position. So I happen to choose uh, just three fruits in here. So, and you separate each element by a comma, and to the element of n doesn't matter. So that's one way. This is a really quick way to do that. And as soon as you, you know, write this line of code here, then um, this array, uh, fruits one, <coughs> will have a length of three. Okay, so length of three uh, by your, your index is a zero index. Um, <coughs> it's a zero based language, so the zero one two, zero, one, two right will be the max index. Okay. So that's uh, the first way to create array. The second way is to use the constructor, a new array, and then you use a paren, and inside here you add your elements, just like up here, except now you use the, you use the keyword new, and then followed by the array uh, function or constructor, uh, just like in, in, in the uh, Java class, right? And then now this array identifier two has these elements. So if you do that, it will look very similar to the other one, except now you use the new array constructor, and then the count will still be three. Okay, index will still be a max of two. And the third way is you can do it this way without uh, setting any values to it yet. Um, you can leave it um, empty, right? Or pretty much if you want to access it, it will be undefined, but it will preserve that many array in the, in the um, elements in the array. So length, let's just say, if you want to, uh, for whatever reason, want to initialize the array or set the array to, let's just say, 20 uh, in length. Okay, that's the length of the array, not the max index, as it is the length. Then you have a array of 20 elements and they're all undefined. And then you can go back and, and assign those values. For example, if I said dairy is new three, um, and then I can go ahead and then, you know, set those values there. Just be careful though, because here I also use a new array, and then here is also a new array, okay? If you supply only one parameter, and that parameter is a integer or is a number, then uh, you will generate an, an array of that size. Okay, and then the value will be undefined in this case. It's empty array. Not empty, but it has no content in there. Whereas if you put two or more in there, so if I say array three, and if I put array of four, three like that, then those two becomes the actual value of the array. Okay, it's no longer the size of the array, but you have 
uh, LOA are two elements. The first value is three, second is three, just like this, apple and banana, right? So if you just want to declare an array with that X or N size, just make sure you put only one number in here. Okay, so that's, um, it, it's, it'll be detected automatically by the, by the interpreter. All right, so array, <coughs> how to access array elements. Pretty straightforward. You always use the index for the index array. Okay, numbers. Uh, you, you use these square brackets. Uh, you can use, um, I believe you can use a number, or you can also use as a character like this. It's fine. I think it should be fine too, as long as it's number. But this is kind of uncommon until we deal with the object. So uh, for now, just use the integer number from 0 to whatever that is, okay? <clears throat> so I declare three variables, I have three elements in the array here, Kodari, and then I would read the first element to the item 1. So item 1 is now has the value of cream, 2, and 3, and so on. So 4, item 4, I'm trying to assign the dairy of index 3, in this case it's none because we didn't create one yet so you'll see that it's undefined okay, it doesn't have it so another example here I could use the index variable instead of just the number right I can replace that with the with the identifier or with the variable so I create the index I'm starting at zero and here I'm just saying so as you can see right <coughs> The first is, I think we talked about this in the other class, the plus, plus, and the minus, minus, mm -hmm. either either before or after the index. Okay, so this one here, uh, I'm <coughs> having the same list up here, those three items here. So it says dairy of index, which is zero, right? But this plus, plus is after it, so therefore it will still be zero when I run this code. That's why I'll get result of cream is the zeroth position. Then after I run this code, then this index is now incremented to 1, right? So the next line will be 1, and then I'll get, you know, milk, and then that will be updated, and then you get 2, and then 2, now update 3, and then finally, this is 3 already, so 3 again you get undefined because there's no such thing in the there 3. So if they all No, no, zero position is, um, no, because your array, your array is, is already set right here, right? So what did you increment? I'm incrementing the counter. Oh. Yeah, okay. just the counter. Okay. Yeah. So instead of, you know, <coughs> manually adding one, one, zero, one, two, three, I just plus, plus each time I run this line. So after, after, the, after this line, index will be one. If I run it again now, then index is now is incremented to 2 and 3 and so on. So if you don't do it this way, then you, could, you have to say, oh, uh, this is index of 0. After that, I have to say index, right, plus plus, and then index, and then index plus plus, right? So it's the same thing. You can do inside the um, square brackets right away. So save you like two lines of code. Okay. And just make sure you do it after and not before. If you do it before, it'll be different. But if you do that, you will skip the zero index. And then you will never get to print that zero. So if you do it like this, then make sure you want to set this with the, the minus one. Right? You want to start with the minus one. So you will run it. <coughs> it will increment first, that to zero, print it, and then, and so on. So, useful but also tricky. If you want to know the length, is you just basically attach the length property to the array, and that will give you the length. So the dairy that length gives you three. Okay, not the index, but the total length of the array.
<clears throat> and I can also, um, if you want to uh, retrieve the last item in the list, of the array, then you can do like, um, actually this is not correct, it should have been like square brackets. Okay. So the dairy of the length, and then minus one, right? Always gives you the last element. If you just do this, it will be undefined because you don't have that last element. So it's always, always minus one. <clears throat> and the first is always zero. Okay, you don't have a, a negative um, array element. <clears throat> 